OK, so you've put all of your descriptive bits together. You've made notes all over the image you've chosen that you want to describe. You've uh, included uh, expanded noun phrases. You've had a go at putting some similes or some metaphors and some personification in. You might have even got some alliteration, which would be excellent. Um, and you're kind of ready now to start putting it together. So this is where we come on to the then try element, where we're drafting our description. We're trying to put our ideas into order. Um, and there's part of a challenge with that, which is using the front of the verbs of place. Um, drafting your description does not have to be something that takes a long time. It is about picking out those ideas you really want to focus on and putting them into an order. You might decide to just draw a simple line. We've done a kind of um, story journey like this before. And I might just decide, um, let's have a look. Well, I've got five, four different senses here. Maybe I'm just going to go each sense um, one after the other. So maybe I think, ah, oh, well, I'm going to start off with, um, I'm going to start off with all the things I can see. You don't need to write anything when you're doing these kinds of plans. It can just be completely written. I'm going to talk about the things I can see first, um, and then I'm going to talk about the things I can hear. And then I might talk about um, the things that I can smell. Maybe that's going to come wafting in. And then I'm going to talk about the things that I can feel. Um, in particular, maybe for this one, I want to focus on the things that I'm going to feel. I'm going to think about my toes. Maybe I'll think about the sand. That's it. That's a really basic sequence. Of course, you might want to then um, earmark some of the ideas onto it, but I wouldn't spend a long time doing this. Um, a more complicated sequence might see you um, dealing with particular areas at once. So if I were to um, just clear this off. So maybe instead of dealing with those um, senses in order, instead what I'm going to want to do is to think about, well, in my mind's eye, I'm going to start looking at one part of the image and I'm going to move across. So if I go back, maybe um, if I imagine all of this is part of one sort of image, well, maybe I'm going to see the, the boat first. So in my sequence then, um, here, maybe I'm going to talk about boat first. And then I'm looking at the boat. Um, after that, I, maybe I see what's above the boat. Maybe that's when I start seeing birds uh, dancing in the sky. I see, I hear them cawing. So I'm using all of the senses in this case for each smaller part. Uh, that's touch, if you couldn't tell. Um, I'm using each of the senses, but I'm picking a particular subject to focus on each time. This is particularly useful if you find you've got a lot to say about each one. If you find you've got, um, for example, maybe you, you didn't have very much to say about crabs, or thought maybe you had one or two things, um, then I would suggest you maybe don't have it as one of the major foci, one of the major talking points if you're doing this kind of planning. Um, this can be really effective because you end up with a lot more, it's more paragraph based. Um, think about the PDD a little bit. So you want to have at least three or four sentences per um, topic, which you kind of got. If you've talked about something you can see, that's one. Talked about something you can hear, something you can smell, and something you can feel about the boat, about the birds. Um, and you've kind of got a nice paragraph there. OK, so the next part of the challenge is about sequencing those ideas and thinking about the sentence starts. It's really how are you going to kick off? Um, that paragraph, how are you going to start that sentence? Because we don't want to use the same thing time and time again. It makes things boring, makes things dull, and you guys have had enough training now to be able to do that in different ways. Very basically, you could start off with things like, I can see, or I could see, the difference there being one is the present tense, uh, one is the past tense. Um, I don't mind which tense you use, pick one and stick to it. Um, so you could use, I can see, I can hear, I can feel, I can touch, etc. However, you're going to start repeating that fairly often if you stick to that, so I would like you to have a bit more variety. Now, as part of your year four and year three expectations is to use fronted adverbials. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those. Just like before, grammar terms usually can be broken down into their different parts to understand what they mean. Now, this is mostly for the adults at home, because sycamores, you should have this down pat. But I'll go through it regardless. So if we have a look at fronted adverbials of place, we can see a key word here is adverb. An adverb is a word that describes an action. 
Uh, an action is what we also call a verb, hence why it's called an adverb. Ad, adjective, used to describe, verb, a doing word. Actions are things like running, jumping, playing, crying, uh, feeling, usually an ing word. If you can make an ing word out of it, it's usually an action. Um, adverbs describe an action, but they can describe it in different ways. They can be a single word, or they can be a, a phrase, which is a group of words. You can have adverbs that describe how an action happens. How did he run? He ran carefully. You can have ones that describe when something happens. When did he run? In the morning. You can have ones that describe where something happens. Well, where did he run? He ran in the park. That's using a preposition. It's an adverbial of place. How, when, where, and how often? How often does he run? He runs every day. He runs very rarely. Those are all examples of adverbs. Um, obviously, with fronted adverbs of place, we're focusing on the where the action is happening. And this is particularly suited to setting descriptions um, because often what you're doing is you're looking around. Uh, so you're going to say, behind me, um, I could hear the soft crashing of the waves. Above me, the seagulls wheeled through the sky, cawing loudly. The fronted element of a fronted adverbial just means it goes at the beginning of the sentence. That's all. So you can take a normal, um, I say a normal sentence, take a non-fronted sentence with an adverbial and you can essentially swap it to the front by making a quick cut and the use of a comma. Um, let's have a look. So I might have, um, as an example, um, uh, the seagulls um, drifted on the wind. That's a prepositional phrase. Uh, the action here is drifted on the wind. You could argue that was a how did they drift or they drifted on the wind. Possibly as a where, where did they drift on the wind? I think it's more of a how. Um, I could easily move it uh, to make it a front of the adverbial where I take the adverbial phrase, which is on the wind, um, and I just put it at the front. So on the wind, comma, the seagulls drifted. Nice and straightforward. Um, that works with any of these phrases uh, that we could think of to use. So you could have um, the crab. Let's see if we can come up with a where one this time. Um, the crab disappeared into the sand beneath my feet. Um, so the crab, or well, we should have a capital letter there. Naughty Mr. Robson, the crab disappeared. excuse my handwriting, into the sand uh, beneath my feet. We'll stop. My action here is the crab uh, disappearing. So that's my action. Um, we've got a where here. Where did they disappear? Well, they disappeared beneath my feet. And I can take that um, position, I can just put it to the front of the sentence, so I can have beneath my feet, comma, the crab disappeared into the sand. That's what we're talking about for fronted adverbials of place. Often it can be easier to um, create the sentence with the adverbial and then move it to the front, just remembering your comma. Um, but I've also provided you with some sentence starters here um, and on the um, handout that you've got, which you can use to help you as well.